NVIDIA Control Panel. If you've got an NVIDIA GPU in your build, then you need to jump into the NVIDIA Control Panel to dial in the correct settings. If not, then you're simply missing out on potential FPS improvements, quality improvements, lower latency, as well as just general optimizations for gaming across your system. So in today's video, I'm gonna be covering off the best setup for all of the key settings within the NVIDIA control panel. Some settings may not have a defined best option. And so for those, I'll be making sure that I give multiple options depending on your user need. So if you do enjoy the video and maybe you're new around here, then please do leave a like below. It really helps me out and subscribe for more content coming very soon. And before we jump into the best settings, today's video is kindly sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is truly the first game to bring a full console experience to your mobile phone. You can explore millions of champion combinations and master tons of different tactics as you take on raid bosses, dungeon runs, and campaign battles. There's even PvP arena matches too. There's over 600 champions with varied unique skills. I've definitely got my two favorites. First has got to be Venus. She's a really versatile legendary support champion. She's packed with incredible area of effect debuffs as well as other AOE abilities. My other favorite right now has to be Coronar, a legendary tank champion. He automatically retaliates to literally any attack thrown at him, so he's a complete menace to have in your lineup. Now, this month is going to be Raid's three-year anniversary, so the celebrations are going to be huge. And while we're waiting, check this out. Raid's first champion skins. Just look at these skins for Arbiter. Alter the champion's appearance to something that suits your style and your preference. I definitely like this Jade Serpent skin the most. That's the one I want to get. This is the best time to get started in Raid, and if you click my link in the description or scan the QR code on the screen, then you'll be able to get a free starter pack worth almost $40. We're talking three free champions at once, Misery Cord, Tiger Soul, and Romero, plus 10 Magic XP Brews, 10 Force XP Brews, and 10 Spirit Brews. That's huge. All of this treasure will be waiting for you right here in game. It's that easy. Click the link in the description. I'll see you guys in the game. So assuming you've got an NVIDIA GPU and you've got your drivers installed, you'll be able to come to your desktop, right click, and then select NVIDIA control panel to open up the panel itself where we can dial in these settings. First thing before we jump into kind of the bulk of these settings, come to adjust desktop color settings. I wanted to cover this one off before we jump into some of the other settings. Uh, but on this area, you're able to see the different monitors that you've got. So I've got my Elgato, which is basically my main monitor. And I've got my Dell monitor, which is a second monitor. For the monitor which you game on, select that up here and come down to digital vibrance. You can turn this up from the default of 50% to something around 55 if you just want a little bit more color or even higher. Some people I've seen go as high as like 70% here. I personally think this makes the colors a bit too vibrant, but definitely increasing this above 50% is a really simple uh, boost to monitor colors, especially if your monitor potentially isn't the most uh, color accurate monitor in the world. To do that, click apply, a nice quick setting to start off with. Next, move over to the adjust image settings with preview window and ensure that you've got use the advanced 3D image settings option selected. This is gonna mean that when we jump into the manage 3D settings area and we start setting those up, uh, it's actually gonna take effect when we run games. After you've done that, you can either click manage 3D settings or you can click the take me there button, which takes you over there. Um, some of you guys will have come in here and messed around with these settings. I would recommend that for this video to follow along with it, you start off by just clicking this restore button. This will put you back to the defaults uh, that would happen if you reinstalled uh, a fresh install of the drivers. Next, let's start at the top. Image scaling. This is an option that replaced the old sharpening option, which I actually used to use in quite a few games. Warzone specifically, it was a really, really awesome option because it was better than the sharpening in the game. The sharpening in the game using uh, NVIDIA filters took away some FPS. It messed up the performance a little bit. Unfortunately, that pure sharpening option isn't available anymore. They actually removed it and they've replaced it with an option which is called image scaling, which will basically lower the resolution a bit below what you're actually running at and then sharpen the image back up. Sort of working like a, a DLSS kind of thing, uh, a super sampling option, but far worse. Um, I would say if you really want to have some FPS improvements, if you're really struggling with your system to run certain games and you've tried every other option, you can come in here, put this to on and set it to something like 
85%. Essentially, that's going to lower the resolution to 85% of the resolution, and it's going to sharpen it back up to try and reach a similar level of sharpness to the max resolution. For most people, though, who have a semi-decent GPU and you're just running a game at like 1080p or something, just keep this to off because that way you're not messing around with your resolution. Ambient occlusion. Uh, ambient occlusion is a, uh, a setting which is typically in the games themselves, in the graphics settings. Um, you can come in here and you can set this to uh, one of these performance or quality options, but it's recommended that you keep this off and just let the application control it. Um, trying to run the ambient occlusion in here has been known to basically it looks a lot worse than turning it on in game. So keep it off in here, turn it on in game if you want that improved uh, shadows that you get from ambient inclusion. Do not turn it on in here. Anisotropic filtering. There is no reason to not turn this straight to 16 times. This is basically a setting that improves how textures look, it improves some of the sharpness and the crispness of the textures. And Turning it on to 16 times in here will force it to 16 times in every game, and it typically works better than trying to set it in game. Um, a lot of the time you might forget to set it in game, or even if you do set it in the game, it doesn't look as good as you do from setting it in the NVIDIA control panel. Uh, if you do have any problems in games where you see like shimmering of objects, that's probably because the game doesn't actually support anisotropic filtering. If that's the case, you can come to the program settings option up here, and this is the same for any of the uh, options if they're not good for like a single game, but they work for everything else. You can come in here, you can click select a program to customize. You can add the program if you want as well. For example, I've got Apex set up to use certain things specifically that other games I don't really want them to. Uh, you can come in here and then you could turn the anisotropic filtering to off and then it'll keep it global. But for the programs, it will make sure that it's still running the kind of specific option. Hopefully that makes sense. Anti-aliasing FXAA. This is a bit of a weird one that they've still got hanging around here. FXAA is probably the most budget anti-aliasing option. It basically to it, it basically means that instead of having the jagged lines, you just have blurry lines. Neither are really that good. Really, you want some kind of temporal anti-aliasing or uh, or MSAA, so TAA or MSAA. Um, they're better anti-aliasing options. You can't set any of those in the control panel. FXA, you definitely don't want to be forcing in here. So keep that off. Anti-aliasing gamma correction. This setting's basically pointless. It doesn't actually do anything. And the reason for that is that gamma correction is enabled in pretty much any game out there. Um, it's This is a very old setting where it basically made it so that any... Uh, edges or objects that had anti-aliasing being applied to them, it would um, ensure that it was correcting the lighting on them so it wasn't looking weird. But it doesn't do anything on or off, so I would recommend that you just keep this off in here. Let the game handle it. Anti-aliasing mode, you definitely want to keep this to application controlled. Setting this to a setting in here, once again, is going to try and override what the application is trying to do. You can't even set a specific type of anti-aliasing in here anyway, so you really don't want NVIDIA control panel messing with that. Keep it to application controlled. Anti-aliasing transparency does pretty much nothing, so just keep it off. Background application max frame rate. What this does is if you're in a game and you're playing and you know you've got it running at your crazy high FPS, hopefully if you've got a nice GPU and you've got your settings set up correctly, uh, if you alt tab out the game and start checking something on the internet, maybe you're looking at just something in relation to the game, maybe you're doing something completely different but you want the game still running in the background to go back to it, then having this set will lower the FPS when you tab out of it. Now, a specific thing here, which it doesn't say in the description down below, is that this actually only works for a game running in either windowed or in borderless. If you run the game in full screen, this will not work, um, which is fine because most games you should be running in borderless these days. Um, I used to be very much on the bandwagon of run every game in full screen because uh, it makes the game have uh, the best input latency, but with improvements to DX12 as well as just windows in general, Running games in borderless is usually just as good, if not better, than full screen, especially because you can alt tab in and out really quickly. So for most people, I'd recommend you come in here, turn it on, put it to whatever personal preference. I usually leave it at 30 FPS. It just means that I can alt tab, the GPU usage drops nicely, and I can just do something else really quickly, and then I can come back to my game. When I tab back in, I go back up to that big FPS that I want. All's good. So set that to around 30. CUDA GPUs. For most people, this isn't going to do anything because you'll only have one GPU. 
If you do have multiple GPUs for whatever reason, come in here and select the most powerful one, because then if you're running a GPU accelerated app that uses CUDA, um, then it will, or PhysX or something like that, then it will come in and use that specific one. For me, and for most people, I've only got one, so it's got this one ticked and that sets it to all. That's absolutely fine. DSR factors. This is a bit of a misunderstood one, in my opinion. Um, it's dynamic super resolution. That's what DSR stands for. And what it does is, for example, I've got a 1080p monitor. So if I currently go into a game, uh, my max resolution I can usually set the game to um, is going to be 1080p. Um, if I try to set it above that for any reason, for up to 2K or 4K or something like that, then all I'm doing is basically losing a lot of performance because I'm just rendering a resolution and my monitor doesn't really support that resolution anyway. What you want to do is come in here and you've got a bunch of different options in here and I would just recommend you tick every single one of these that you can. Um, these two ones down here, the 1.78 and the 2.25 are uh, blanked out and that's because I've got the uh, DL scaling, same quality, two times more efficient. I've got them selected up here so these work a little bit better. Click OK. And then what that's going to mean is if I go into a game and I change the resolution to one of these, so for example, if I change it to two times is, uh, or 1.7, so 1.78 times, which is 2560 by 1440 or 1440p, then it's going to activate dynamic, uh, sorry, what was it called again? Dynamic super resolution. I thought it was sample for a second. Dynamic super resolution. And it's going to give you the higher resolution but at a much better performance than you would get natively trying to run it. Hopefully that makes sense. Essentially, turn it on because if you're running at native resolution, you're never gonna notice it anyway. If you do start to try and bump up your resolution on potentially a single player game or something where you don't mind as much about performance and you just wanna improve the quality, then this is gonna give you that for free. It's great. DSR smoothness, just leave this at the default of 33%. It works well, I wouldn't mess around with this. It's the default for a reason. That's what Nvidia believes is the best option for this. So I don't touch it. Low latency mode. So for this, you wanna set it globally to on. Do not use ultra. People just see the word ultra and they think, wow, well, ultra is better than on. Lower input latency, great. Ultra has been known to somewhat reduce input latency in certain games, but it's actually known for causing more uh, latency problems, stuttering as well. So I don't really touch it. I tend to leave this on globally. If the game you're playing has NVIDIA Reflex low latency built into it, so a game like Warzone or a game like Fortnite, a lot of the big competitive games have it, uh, where you can set it to um, off, on, or on plus boost, then that's a separate issue. But if it has that and you're gonna turn it on in game, then go into the program settings for that specific game and turn low latency mode in here to off. So two setups, a game without reflex low latency in the settings, you wanna come in here and just make sure it's on. So I set it on globally because most games don't have low latency, uh, especially a lot of the single player games. They don't have that option in game. If it has that option in game, go into the program settings, set it to off, and then mess around with the low latency options in the game. That's the best setup. Max frame rate. I would steer away from using the max frame rate option in the NVIDIA control panel for most games. Um, if you're gonna set a frame rate limit, either use the in-game frame rate limiter. A lot of games have it these days. You can just set a max frame rate. If it doesn't, then you need to get uh, an application like Reva Tuner statistic server, I believe it's called, um, which goes with MSI Afterburner, and then that allows you to actually set a max frame rate for games. Both of those options have been known to give far better input latency than the max frame rate option in the control panel. This has been known to cause some latency problems, cause some stuttering, so stay away from it. Multi-frame sampled AA or MFAA. This is a option which will improve how the MSAA anti-aliasing works. So if you're playing a game which uses MSAA, and for example, you set uh, your option in the game to MSAA 2X, well, MSAA 4X in game looks better than 2X, but 4X uses a lot more resources and gives you lower FPS. If you were to come in here and turn on uh, MFAA, then the 2X will look pretty much as good as the 4X, but you're still gaining the FPS advantage of having it lowered at 2X. Hopefully that makes sense. 
If you've got a game that doesn't use MSAA, this just won't do anything. So really, this is another one of these options where you may as well turn it on because in situations where MSAA is not being used, it's not going to have any adverse effect. It's only going to help you out when it needs it. So definitely keep it on. Open GL rendering GPU. This doesn't matter. Um, applications that use OpenGL are few and far between now, so just leave it to auto select. Power management mode, probably the most misunderstood option in all of the 3D settings. People come in here and they see prefer maximum performance. Oh my God, I'm gonna set that straight away because that's what I want, I want the max performance. No, it's been proven that all prefer maximum performance does is basically run your GPU at max clocks, at max strength, all the time even when it doesn't need to which is pointless you know the gpu can speed up and slow down as it needs to leave this at normal if you get into a situation where the game needs your gpu to be running as quick as possible having it at normal isn't going to stop it doing that and it's actually just going to improve the lifetime of your gpu it's going to improve the health of your pc it's going to reduce the temperatures do not run prefer maximum performance it is a bait for sure just keep it on normal it will it will just do its thing when it needs to do it. Let your GPU rest when it needs to, okay? Preferred refresh rate. I typically put this to highest available. Um, I don't want the refresh rate to ever be being turned down. I've got a 240 hertz monitor, and if for some reason it's not reaching that, then that's not a good thing. So I make sure I've got this set to highest available. You should too. Shader cache size. A bit of an annoying one, but basically when you're playing games, um, if there are any uh, games which use the shader cache, which is basically an area where they can store certain uh, files in regards to the shaders, where they can then they can then draw from them, uh, they don't have to recompile them every time you come across a similar thing in a game, because that can cause stuttering. Games like Elden Ring are really, really uh, uh, bad for this. You, you enter a new area and the whole game stutters because it's compiling shaders. Then having the shader cache size set up basically means if I set it to one gig, once I hit one gig of storage, it will start clearing out the oldest ones. You're only keeping the new ones. For most people, one gig and five, one gig or five gig, depending on how much drive space you've got, should be fine. I usually set it to one gig because I don't really find I need five gig. It would be nice if we knew what driver default was. It doesn't actually tell us anywhere. So yeah, one gig is all right. If you feel like you need more space, turn up to five. Now we've got four texture filtering options. The only one we actually need to change in here is the texture filtering quality one, because if we change this, it will change the other three. I'm gonna give the two best options here. If you want the best quality, that's what you care about, you care about graphical fidelity, put it to quality. If you want the best performance, so you care more about um, the best input latency, the best FPS, which a lot of you guys will, and put it to performance. Do not use high quality or high performance. These are simply worse options. They lead to far more issues than quality or performance. So once again, use quality for visual fidelity, use performance for FPS or latency. For me, I'm playing a lot more games at the moment which I want performance on, so I'm gonna set this to performance. And you'll see it has updated the settings around it. If I change this to quality, it, for example, turns off the anisotropic sample optimization. If I turn performance on, then the anisotropic sample optimization turns on. The other two settings don't get affected. If I was starting to use these other ones, it would start changing them. We don't want to change those. Threaded optimization. This is a setting which you should just leave to auto. Turning this on and forcing it across applications has been known to cause problems. If it needs to be used, it will be used correctly. So keep this to auto. Triple buffering. Pretty useless saying, it says at the bottom, it enables you to uh, enable or disable triple buffering for OpenGL applications. There are very, very few OpenGL applications, so we'll keep this to off. Vertical sync, I usually leave this to use 3D application setting. If I'm gonna control V-Sync for any reason, I'm gonna do it in the application, I'm not gonna do it in here. If you are running G-Sync, this is not a video gonna be explaining how to set up G-Sync, but you would actually come in here and you would set this to on in the control panel. But for anyone out there who is just playing with a normal monitor or is just playing without G-Sync, 
just give this to use a 3D application setting. And then if you want to use VSync in game for whatever reason, I recommend you don't, then you can do it in there. Virtual pre, sorry, virtual reality pre-rendered frames. You should keep this to one. This is only going to affect virtual reality users. If you put this higher, you can get better frame rates, uh, a better kind of performance, but latency is pretty terrible. And that's really bad when you're in a VR headset and you look to the right and then it takes like a, an extra couple of milliseconds to turn. Not good. Keep this to the lowest possible. And then virtual reality variable rate super sampling. Turn this to on. Even if you guys don't have, or sorry, turn it to adaptive, not always on. Adaptive. The reason you want it set to adaptive is so that any game that supports variable rate super sampling, which there is a small list available, you can look at them if you search for them online, uh, then it will activate this option, um, which can improve that performance overall. If it's not available, then it won't be used. And there we go, guys. That is all of the settings for the NVIDIA control panel. Hopefully I didn't go on too much. Try to explain what all these settings do. Make sure you click apply before closing out of this. Oh, and then we get a little bit of a black screen. Don't know if it went black for you, but there we go. Oh, is it done? There we go. <laughs> all locked in. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.